Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. This tutorial works alongside the plain leather purse tutorial, but we're going to be doing something slightly different and creating this bow purse. I would recommend that you watch the plain purse tutorial first because I cover all the tips and techniques and construction methods in that tutorial clearly. In this video, we're going to be looking at the difference and how to make this purse. So we're just going to be looking at the different processes to make this purse and also the template that you need to cut out. So if you collect everything that you're going to need, we can get started. For the bow purse, you're going to follow the details on this table and cut out the following. I recommend that you record these measurements somewhere so that you can refer back to this during the tutorial if you need to. Just to note, the centimetre or inch measurements are not exact conversions. I've designed the pattern to work in inches and in centimetres, so please stick to either metric or imperial and continue with that throughout the tutorial. Let's go over the pieces that you should have cut to create the bow purse. I'm also going to mention here which of the pieces you need to interface. So, you're going to need one front and one back of the purse. These both need to be interfaced on the wrong side and they're going to measure the stand measurement for the front and back of the purse, which is six and a quarter inches wide, 14.6 centimetres, and four and a half inches high, 11.5 centimetres. As with the other tutorials, you're also going to need to cut two of the tabs out. These will not be interfaced. They are going to measure an inch and a half in width, 3.5 centimetres, and one inch in height two centimetres. Now the specific details that you need for the bow. You're going to need to have one main piece of the bow. This will measure seven and a quarter inches wide, 17 centimetres, and two and three quarter inches high, seven centimetres. This will not be interfaced and you must be sure here that you have cut off any of the pen markings because we're going to use the raw edge of the leather here. So you don't want those to be visible. I'd also recommend that you do that on the tabs and on the bow middle piece. Now the bow middle piece here measures one inch wide and three inches high. That's 2.5 centimetres in width and 7.5 centimetres in height. You're going to need to have a zip just like we have for the other tutorials. The zip will measure four inches or 10 centimetres for this size purse, but obviously you might be making your own size purse anyway. If you'd like to know how we built the sizes of these purses, please follow the link in the description box below to a blog post where you can read about how to make your own size. Now we're going to start by constructing the bow, but before we do that, I would like you to mark a few bits onto the front of the purse. These are bits that will actually help you out later on down the line. So what we're going to do is with the front of the purse, right side facing up, you can position the bow, right side facing up as well, into the middle of it. Now you'll see that the width of the bow extends the width of the purse. That isn't a problem at all, because once this is sort of cinched in to create a bow, you'll find that it will shrink up a little bit. So we always needed to add a little bit of extra on the width there. What we're looking at here is the difference in the height of the two. When you create the bag, you will more than likely want the bow to be in the center of the bag. If you don't, then you're welcome to position it wherever you would like. But for this tutorial, we're going to be putting it in the center of the bag. So to do that, we need to find the center of the bag at this point, before we move too far down the line and we've got the zip sewn in and things like that, which are going to affect it or not make it quite as easy. So if we take a look at the difference between the height of the front of the purse, you should have cut four and a half inches, 11.5 centimeters, for the height of the front of the purse. And the height of the bow is two and three quarter inches, which is seven centimeters. Now the difference between the two is an inch and three quarters, or 4.5 centimeters. So what we're going to need to do there is divide that amount between the bottom and the top. So half of an inch and three quarters is seven eighths, half of 4.5 centimetres is 2.25 centimetres. 
So all you're going to need to do is to take your ruler and to measure that on at the bottom and at the top. And you can just double check this now if you like with the bow sitting on top of the front of the purse. I would then take a pen that you're going to be able to see this in and you only want to mark this in the seam allowance. So I'm just going to do a very small marking on the edge of the front there. Very small. And this is just going to be a positioning point for me to place the bow in the center of the purse when I come to do that later. So I'll do one at the bottom, one at the top, and the same on the other side. You can do it on your back piece as well, it doesn't matter, but one will be enough. Start by taking the bow middle. Now we're going to fold this in half with the right sides of the fabric together. And we're going to match the two shorter edges. You want to sew on the sewing machine half an inch or one centimetre away from the two raw edges, so down here. I would hold that in place with bulldogs or wonder clips and we can go to the sewing machine. Now we're sewing the middle part of the bow. We're following the half an inch or one centimetre seam allowance using a 2.5 mil stitch length and we'll backstitch at the start and at the end. I'd recommend using a walking foot if you have one for ease. Now once you've sewn the middle of the bow, you're going to want to trim the threads and then you're going to want to trim down the seam allowance. And you're going to want to take a sharp pair of scissors and trim the seam allowance to approximately one eighth or three millimetres. And we need to do that to remove the bulk so these bits can go out of the way. Now you're going to turn this around to the right side. If you're working with a normal fabric, you by all means could press those seam allowances open, but with a leather it doesn't matter quite so much. Okay, so now we've got the middle of the bow with the right side facing out. I'm going to show you how to position this onto the bow itself. So the next bit is a little bit fiddly. We have got the main section of the bow and we've got the middle section of the bow and that's been sewn and turned around to the right side. What we need to do now is to feed the middle section onto the bow itself. So the easiest way that I've found to do this is to fold up this main bow piece into a sort of concertina. So you just keep folding and keep folding and keep folding the layers so they're all sort of one on top of each other. And you want to do this to the size that's going to fit through the middle of the bow. And you're then going to feed this through the center of the bow. And this bit, as I said, can be a little bit fiddly. And you just wanna work that along until you have the middle of the bow in the center of your bow piece. Now this is where I get a bit picky and I start sort of pulling the layers of fabric to make sure that I have a nice shape to my bow. I also make sure that I have right side of my bow fabric facing up and the right side of my middle bow facing up and from the back side I make sure that the seam for the middle part of the bow is in the centre back of the bow. So I need to twist that around a little bit and this is so that the seam isn't visible from the right side. That's a bit better. So I'm going to leave you to have a bit of a play with the bow until you're happy with that and then I'll show you how we can attach this onto the rest of the purse. So I'm going to presume that you're happy attaching the tabs to either end of the zip. If you're not, then I recommend watching the tutorial on the plain leather purse. I'll pop a link to that in the description box below. In this tutorial I cover all of the details on how to work with leather as well as sort of the nitty gritty technical details that go into making these purses or bags. I'm also going to ask you to attach both the front and back onto the zip and top stitch them. This is also what you would do in the main leather plain purse tutorial. Just remember to think about which way the nap or the pattern is going when you position this on so that once you've sewn it onto the zip and you turn it back, you have the pattern or the nap going down in the correct way.
So I'm going to leave you to do that. If you're unsure, please follow the link in the description box below. Join me back here once you've got both sides attached to the zip and top stitched, and I'll show you about how we're going to introduce the bow. Hopefully you can see that I've inserted the zip and top stitched on both sides. The next step is to actually sew the bag together and at the same time to introduce the bow that we previously made. Now hopefully you will still have the markings that we made on one or perhaps both sides of your bag and that's fantastic. We're going to need those to make sure that we centralise the bow. Now the first thing that you need to think about is which side do you want to be the front? Both of these at present could be the front. Now I am right handed so I would prefer to open my zip towards the right and to close it to the left. Therefore I would prefer this to be the front of my purse. Obviously if you prefer the other way that's absolutely fine. Luckily I've got the markings for my bow on this side if you didn't, I would just measure up from the bottom to where the marking is and take that measurement from one side onto the other side. So, now we're going to position the bow. We want the bottom edge of the bow to line up with the bottom marking and ideally the top edge of the bow to line up with the top marking. The same on both sides. You will find that the bow will extend the sides slightly. And the reason we did that is because as the middle part of the bow goes in and it sort of cinches in the shape, you can find that the corners of the bow are a little bit shorter than the middle area. So we therefore extended the whole of the bow to make sure that all of the edges would be wide enough to fit the width of the purse or bag. So please don't worry if it extends in certain areas. I personally try and extend it by a similar amount on both sides. Now I recommend that you use bulldog clips or wonder clips to hold the bow in place and we've got right side of the fabric facing up and right side of the bow facing up and the bow is nicely centralised. The next step is to open the zipper so that we can turn the bag around afterwards and to fold the back of the purse down onto the front of the purse so that the right sides are together. The plan now is to include the back in the pinning or the, the use of wonder clips or bulldog clips. If you are worried about this, you can by all means go ahead and stitch the bow on either side onto the front layer of fabric. If you decide to do that, make sure that you do it in the seam allowance. Now, I'm going to fold this down in half. Now I've got the right sides together the most important thing here is that you match up these top edges. We want to make sure that when you turn the bag around, they're in line and you don't have one higher than the other. So they need to be matched up, as does the end of the bag here. And just work your way around matching everything up as you can. So I've pinned the three layers together, the front, the back and the bow. Now we're going to stitch the side seams together first. We're going to start stitching at the top here and we have to start stitching here because we want to make sure that these two edges stay on top of one another and don't move. Otherwise when you turn the bag around you'll find that the top edge of the bag isn't aligned and therefore doesn't look quite professional. We're then going to stitch all the way down to the bottom edge following the half an inch or one centimetre seam allowance. Now, when we get to the bottom edge, I would like you to backstitch for at least the seam allowance that you're going to be sewing across the bottom. So that means you're going to backstitch for about half an inch or one centimetre. The reason why we need to do this is because when we finish sewing all of this, we're going to trim everything down. And therefore, we don't want to have a point of weakness. So we want to make sure that we've backstitched far enough for it to be secure when we start trimming. The reason I'm suggesting that we sew the side here, then we'll turn it over and sew this side here, and then we'll sew along the bottom, is for two reasons. The first one is to make sure that we get a match with these top edges here. If you sewed all the way around, you would probably find that the one you finished with wasn't matched up. And also to make sure that we're holding the bow in place. So we're sewing both sides with the bow and then across the bottom. Down the side seams, you'll probably find that you have to use the zipper foot because a normal foot won't be able to get close enough 
to the edge of the zipper or the zipper tab. If you struggle with the zipper foot on your machine, try and use it for the top bit that you have to use it for, and then move to a walking foot, or perhaps use some stabilizer, something else to help pull the leather through the sewing machine. So join me at the sewing machine, and I'll show you how we're going to do this. Starting at the top edge, you're going to stitch forwards and backwards to secure it. You're then going to work your way down following the half an inch or one centimeter seam allowance. And here you're following the edge of the front or the back of the purse, not the bow if this extends. And if this does extend, you're more than welcome to trim it off if that would make it easier for you. Now you don't want to stitch any wrinkles or creases in the bow if you can help it, so you just want to sort of try and ease those out as you're working with it. All the way to the end. And when we get to the end, we're going to back stitch for approximately half an inch and then forward stitch again or one centimeter. And that's to cover the horizontal bottom of the bag stitching line. Now I'm going to let you do that the same to the other side and then I'll show you how to do the bottom of the bag. Once you're happy that you've sewn both sides, we can stitch across the bottom edge following the same seam allowance of half an inch or one centimeter. You're going to want to do the same back stitching and make sure that you back stitch over the vertical line or horizontal line now that you have just sewn. Stitch all the way across and do the same at the other side. Make sure that you don't catch the bow in this seam whilst you're doing it. Now you don't have to use the zipper foot for this. You can work with a walking foot or a foot that works better with your machine if you find that it's struggling with this. The other thing to note when you're doing all three of these seams, if you're using the zipper foot, make sure that your needle is in the correct position for you to be using the markings on the plate of your machine if you are using those. Now you should have sewn down both sides and also across the bottom edge, following the seam allowance of half an inch or one centimetre. The next step here will be to trim the seam allowances clip the corners, remove any extra fabric, and yes, you can remove the extra bits of the bow here. Before you do that though, I would recommend that with the bow, you turn it around and just double check that you've caught the bow where you should have done and all of those things before you start trimming, because it will allow you to amend any mistakes at this point if you need to. If everything's good, then I'm going to leave you to trim everything down and turn it around. If you want to follow the tutorial on where I did this, I'll pop a link to the plain leather purse tutorial in the description box below. And here you have it, the finished both purse. So a couple of things to note. If you were planning on making perhaps a bigger one of these or you were going to put a lot of heavy things in it, then when you're stitching around it, you can use a smaller stitch length of 1.5 millimeters rather than the standard stitch length of 2.5 millimeters or you could perhaps stitch over yourself for a second pass. Now, when you turn this around, if it looks like this, please don't be worried because the bow can turn from side to side. Also, once you've turned it around, please have a play with the bow and sort of train it into position. You don't have to position the middle part of the bow in the middle. You could put this to one side if you wanted to and have sort of the tie of the bow further to one side than the other side. Now I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. You've learned how to sew with leather and how to make this design of purse. If you'd like to take a look at the frill purse or the plain purse from this series of videos, I'll pop links to those in the description box below. Thank you for watching and good luck with your sewing. Thank you.